Is this the only box today? So we have one box at the moment of something small. Yeah, last episode I had like, you know, this is like a wall of boxes. What's in this? Oh, okay, this is cool. Audience choice. So maybe I'm asking the wrong person. I'm asking Bradley, who's behind the camera, and I probably shouldn't. I should be asking you all, what did you choose for me today? I've heard a lot of people want to learn about alexandrite. I've heard fossils. It could be a fossil, alexandrite. I don't know. I'm kind of stumped. I should probably read more of the comments. You're right. I have no clue what's coming up, and I'm really excited and kind of curious. So let's just open it up. Ready? <gasps> I think I know what this is. Copper light. All right, we've got copper light, which I do remember I was talking about fossils on a previous episode. What video was that? You guys know what copper light is? Should we tell them? Yeah. Fossilized dinosaur dung, and I am working my hardest to get it on this show. <laughs> copper light, look it up. Spam the comment section, and maybe we'll get it on the show. And I requested that everyone comment below if they want to see copper light. So thank you everyone for your help. I've got the best audience, and now we've got a really cool specimen to talk about. Today we are going to do a deep dive into fecal matter. Maybe I'm biased, but I think that copper light is far more interesting than petrified wood, partially because it came from a dinosaur. Could have come from a dinosaur or an ancient croc. A dial. Croc. I had no clue that JTV actually owned copper light in our collection. You know, you never know what you're going to find here. It's like when I come to work, I'm mining, and sometimes I get a piece of jewelry, sometimes I get a piece of poop. The field of gemology, it is so big. I feel like in gemology, you can't know everything because it's always changing. There's new treatments, you know, there's new stones found, new productions, and that's what I love about this business. I'm never going to get bored, especially when there's beautiful jewelry. So for you guys to choose copper light that you wanted to learn about that, and I want to learn more about that that's pretty cool. This makes it an extra fun episode. So when you saw the title and you clicked on this video, you probably wondered, is it copper light or maybe copper light? I've only heard it as copper light. That is kind of cool that fossilized dung isn't just called fossilized dung. It actually has a name. Isn't that kind of cool? Before I went to Tucson and I saw it at a trade show, never knew that. So when you are telling your friends all the cool things you learned about fossilized dung, tell them to come watch this video and they can learn too. First thing I'm noticing, it's brown. Duh. It is kind of squiggly. It doesn't look like the poop emoji on my iPhone. Can I put some googly eyes on this? This is a very old piece of poo. I don't probably need gloves for this. There's probably no bacteria on it. Don't you get a coli? I mean... It could be turtle, crocodile, it could be dinosaur, you never know. Oh my gosh, I wonder, is this considered an organic? It came from something that was living, but this itself wasn't living. So I wonder if, if this is an organic, technically an organic material. Comment below, inorganic or organic, and let me know what you think. I'm gonna go with organic. I am a little confused why it looks like a pine cone because I have actually seen copper light before. It was smoother, it didn't look like a pine cone. I'm kind of confused as to where that comes from. One of the most important things you are probably wondering, and I was wondering when I learned about copper light, was does it smell? So, because you all requested this, I am gonna take one for the team and I'm gonna do a smell test. You ready? Three, two, one. Yeah. Maybe a little <coughs> metallic. <coughs> it doesn't smell like poo. It smells like something old and dusty. Okay, that's enough of the smell test. It really smells that bad? I don't know, you smell it. No. Do you, it. Your job. It this is I don't really smell gemstones and jewelry. I don't think I'm gonna smell it just smells old and dusty and then I wonder if the dust is part of the dew. So for all of you rendering out there, it does not smell like poo. It just smells old and dusty. It looks old and dusty too. <coughs> I am not licking this. So why are fossils important? Fossils are important because we can learn about the past, judging by the size of the copper light and maybe what's in the copper light, we can learn more about the environment that the animal, that the copper light was dropped in. The size will kind of tell us 
about the size of the animal. We can see what, what the animals were eating at that time. So for instance, if there was a dinosaur around now, you'd be able to see if it was having Panda Express or Chipotle. So this, you know, this could be from an ancient turtle or crocodile. It could also be from a T-Rex, but based on the size, I'm gonna say it's probably not from a T-Rex. Um, I suspect that if you found a piece of coprolite and you know sliced it open and checked it out under a microscope, you'd probably find bone fragments because you know T-Rex, chomp, chomp, chomp. Yeah, it's super dark. Okay, yeah, let's cut that out. That's no, gross. It's staying in. It's staying in. <laughs> Natalie, it's dark. So you know that's just another way that we can use fossils to learn more about the past and. That is part of what I love about gemology. You know, you can learn, you can use stones and even jewelry to learn about history. And, you know, we're really lucky that we have stuff like this. When you have a dog and the dog goes potty in the yard, usually, you know, the it's just broken down into fertilizer. So what I'm curious about is how is this fossilized so perfectly. We've done an episode about amber in the past, and as a gemologist, I know how amber, how we get amber. I know how we get bugs in amber, but we didn't learn about coprolite in gemology school. Um, so I'm not quite sure how this is fossilized so perfectly. It's kind of like a window into the past. You know, you can learn a lot from fossilized bone, but you can also learn a lot from fossilized dung. This really isn't a gemstone. I would definitely not wear this as a piece of jewelry. I would definitely not set this. But if I had access to other you know, specimens of coprolite, I would love to slice it open, look it under a microscope, and maybe talk with a paleontologist or, I don't know, a biologist or even a geologist and see what they think about this piece. There's a lot more clues um, in a piece of fossilized dung than I may realize. There are examples of you know, plant matter that's been fossilized and it kind of looks like this because it was squeezed through maybe holes in a tree. So think about your toothpaste. Like if you squeeze your toothpaste too hard and there's, you know, it like comes out, um, that's kind of like that plant material. It, it is squeezed through a hole and it comes out kind of looking like poo. Um, and the reason you can, and the way that you can tell the difference is that coprolite, true coprolite, if you, um, you know, maybe slice it open and look at it under a microscope, you'll be able to see um, digestible bits, kibbles and bits. A few years back, there was a piece of coprolite sold at auction that was six million years old. I wonder how, mu how much it went for? $10,000. Now, there is some speculation that this piece of fossilized poo wasn't exactly for real. It was a faux poo. <laughs> You know, some people thought maybe it was plant matter, and we've talked already about how sometimes coprolites can be confused for just fossilized plant matter. I don't know if I'd want to drop $10,000 on poo. It's an expensive piece of poo. I don't think the value of this piece is for its aesthetics. The value of this piece is because it's kind of like the who, what, when, where, why of the animal that dropped this off. The size of the animal, what the animal ate, you know, time frame. There's all these ways that paleontologists or those that study fossils are able to pull a lot of information out of this piece of poo. It's kind of gross today on the show, and I'm gonna turn that up a notch. There's actually been fossilized vomit and fossilized urine found. And in some um, pieces of fossilized cop of coprolite, there have been, um, like parasites, like bits of par ancient parasites found. This is all kind of gross, but there is worth to finding all of this and to talking about all this because we can learn about the past. Who knows all the doors that poo will open. If we were allowed to cut this thing open um, and I had, you know, I was with a paleontologist, we could probably figure out what the organism that dropped this off for us was was eating, you know? Was it a herbivore or a carnivore? Maybe we could carbon date it or see kind of how long ago this was dropped off. What do you say? Pooped? Pooped out? Pushed out? Dropped off? I'm not quite sure. But there is just a whole host of things that you can learn from this. I'm gonna wash my hands before I go lunch. For sure. There you go. If I had to pick what animal this was from, I would say an ancient crocodile, because I love crocodiles. In my research, crocodile coprolite was more elongated, and this doesn't really look elongated to me, so I'm probably not holding croc dew, but that's okay. Hold it up under your nose like a mustache. Ew, no. There's a lot of, you know, kind of um, gray area when you talk about coprolite. There's, you know, how do you define coprolite? What time period is coprolite from? What animal, animal is coprolite from? You know, it's kind of hard to get exact answers when you're dealing with something this old and it's poo. So with our knowledge, our best guess is that this is coprolite, but who knows, maybe if we slice this baby open and we see that it's actually just plant matter. You never know. At the end of the day, I get Copperlight on the show because of you. So thank you so much for your comments. Thank you for um, writing in and telling us what you like to see. Please do that again. 
All right, everyone, I want you to take a closer look at the color, um, the shape. Do you see how it kind of looks like pine cones? Um, that's pretty neat. I was very surprised to see this piece of copper light. I thought it was gonna be smoother. I thought it'd be a little bit bigger. Maybe this was a baby T-Rex. You think it could be a baby T-Rex? Comment below with a dinosaur emoji. I wanna see how many I can get on this video. Oh, tell you what, maybe if I get 100, I'll dress up as a T-Rex on the show. audience choice episode and I am so excited that we were actually able to do this and I've got a piece of copper light. I loved learning about this with you and I'm so glad that we were able to get this on the show today. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who commented in, who who liked and subscribed. Um, you know, this channel is successful because we've got great people like you that are gem nerds, gem nerds just like me. And if you want to see more what we do do here on Unboxing, you're going to want to like and subscribe and share this video with your friends. Maybe you'll be a copper light expert. <laughs>